In this build, we're getting a better understanding of bell siphons by trying one in the hydropower setup on our rain gutter. As many of you predicted in the comments, getting power from rain gutters involves a lot of cleaning. And even with relatively clean gutters, a few weeks without rain can quickly turn into nasty standing water. Yeah, it kind of looks like I peed in it. But now that summer's winding down, it's time for a fresh start so we can tackle some of the awesome suggestions in the comments. By the time we got to part four, the rainy season was tapering off. To get the same flow, we installed a flush valve from a toilet at the base of the gutter and connected it to a floating plastic bottle. That turned the gutter into a reservoir, storing rainwater all day, then releasing it to make power once it was full. It worked most of the time, but sometimes the float would get stuck, causing the gutter to overflow, <laughs> sending water everywhere. Oh, it doesn't soak my phone down there. But immediately after publishing the video, there were about 40 comments telling me I should have tried a bell siphon. And I have to say, that's an awesome idea. But to figure out how they work, we have to understand water pressure. We've all used a straw to drink from a glass, drawing the liquid up and into our mouth. We've probably also done the trick where blocking the top of the straw with our finger lets us lift fluid out of the glass. In either case, atmosphere contacts the surface of the water, so we know the pressure there is one atmosphere, or one ATM. But if we could dive into the glass like a swimming pool and swim to the bottom, we'd feel pressure increasing the farther down we go. Whoa, my ears. That's because pressure is equal to density times gravity times height. So the greater the depth or height, the greater the pressure. But what about inside the straw? If pressure increases as we go down, then it must decrease as we go up. Oh. So if the pressure at the surface is one ATM, then it must be less than that to go up inside the straw. So what we think of as suction is simply low pressure, or at least lower than atmospheric. So when we block the top of the straw, we're simply preventing atmosphere from entering and equalizing the pressure. Drinking from the straw removes the atmosphere, pulling the liquid up to drink. We can see the effect in these two straws. Anywhere the air contacts the fluid, we know the pressure is atmospheric. In the straw on the left, we follow the fluid downward and the increased pressure inflates the balloon. But for the straw on the right, atmosphere contacts the bottom of the straw telling us the pressure inside the straw is below atmospheric. That pulls air out of the balloon, which is then collapsed by the atmosphere around it. Oh. Now the cool thing about a siphon is it can take advantage of these high and low pressures to move fluid from one place to another without the use of a pump. All we need is to momentarily trap the fluid in a vertical tube. With the lower end of the tube blocked, the only place atmosphere can contact the fluid is in the upper glass. Therefore, maximum pressure is found where our finger blocks the end. But as soon as we remove the blockage, that maximum pressure suddenly switches to one atmosphere, meaning the pressure above it is now lower than atmospheric. This easily draws the water up out of the upper glass, just as if we were drinking it with a straw. This siphon will keep going so long as the bottom of the tube is at a lower height than where the fluid starts and no air enters the tube. I honestly wasn't sure this would work, but if we clip the tube into both glasses, we can keep this siphon going forever just by making the glasses switch places. But here's a question. If we were to put both the glasses at the same level or even a slightly different level, what would happen to the levels of the water? And if you think you know the answer, stick around until the end of the video and we'll try it and you can see if you're right. So now we understand how a regular siphon works, but the idea of running outside to suck on a hose every time it rains is not super appealing. 
Can we get to the part about the bell siphon already? Okay, okay. But to talk about the design of our bell siphon, I want to try out this new electronic engineering paper that I got. It's really slick. It's got to turn on my stylus here. We'll start by sketching the roof and then gutter. There we go. The next thing we need to do is fill in the exit so that we have everything except for our tube. And then we gotta kind of fill in the housing of it here and add our uptake tube where the water is gonna go in and then fill in between and then add an exit tube right there. And of course it wouldn't be a bell siphon without some kind of bell. So let's throw that on right there. Okay, I realize this is sort of an unconventional design, but it gives us the opportunity to do some cool stuff. For instance, uh, all we have to do is move this point up and down. This sets the height of where the water will begin to exit. So it's, it's how high it can get without it overflowing the gutter. And then if we move this up and down, this basically says how low it'll drain down to. So it makes it super easy to adjust those two set points. If we want to see how it works, let's just activate the water here and we're just going to fill it in. Okay, here we go. So we're coming up inside the entrance tube and it's working its way up. Now it's filling up inside the bell, but it's still not triggering yet. We have to get, okay, so we're getting up to here and the water can start to flow down the exit tube and we just have to get high enough and get high enough flow to where it starts to trigger. Oh, there it goes. It's draining, sweet. Okay, so it drains all the way down, all the way down, all the way down and it's maintaining the suction there like it's supposed to until it gets down to the bottom of this tube and then there we go, it loses suction, it drains all the way out and it's done and it's ready to start the next cycle. And it does all of that automatically, which is awesome because then we don't have to go out there and be messing with the gutter. All that's left to do now is build the darn thing. And I love machining, but when it comes to light duty parts, it's hard to beat going straight from CAD to a 3D printer. Just remove the support material and it's ready for assembly. I'm sure my wife won't miss the glass I stole. I mean, borrowed. Nice. <laughs> that fits awesome. All right, let's check this thing out. But before we can install anything, we've got to tear out the old toilet valve and all the plastic we glued in there. Fortunately, hot glue is no match for a heat gun. Thanks to careful measurements and a bit of luck, things more or less fit like they're supposed to. We just need to squirt in some more hot glue to hold it in place. For a quick test, I'm inflating this plastic bag in the gutter so we can use the hose and not waste a bunch of water. And let me say, as an engineer, when you've been thinking about a design for months and you finally get to test it, it's nearly impossible to contain your excitement. Yes. That is awesome. But I think we've got some things we've got to address. All right, I want to show you something I was worried about this, the gutter is full, the bell siphon is passing water, and it's not doing anything. It's not, it's not doing its cycle, but it's actually going to start sucking the water down. It's just sitting here. It's raining. Water is falling in the gutter, but we're just losing it down the bell siphon as if it was just some leak. Check, check this out. It's like it needs a certain minimum amount of flow to even trigger the thing. We can see down here, the water is running down the tube. And I mean, there it is. We're losing, we're losing the water and we're not getting any power out of it. 
In fact, if we go back to that wiki page and read the fine print under automatic siphons, it says, the most common failure is for the liquid to dribble out slowly, and that reducing the tube size often helps. So I'm gonna try jamming something in the exit to see what happens. Okay, so the bell siphon is working, and right now <clears throat> I've restricted the end of this little tube here so that it will start at a lower flow, but now it's flowing at a lower flow as well. So we're, before we were going for that two gallons a minute, so it would take you know, roughly 30 seconds to fill this gallon jug. Uh, I'm at four minutes to fill the thing, and that's just not gonna work. I immediately grabbed my sketch pad and explored a bunch of ideas for solving this with floats and valves until I recalled the KISS principle, which stands for keep it simple, silly. And turns out if I just waited a little longer with the rain, the thing was about to cycle on its own. Oh, oh, there it goes, there it goes. There, it finally went. So it, it reached that level that it needed to to actually trigger the auto siphon and now it's gonna drain really quickly. That was cool to be here for that. So with the reins in full force, I'm pulling out the restriction to let it run and see what happens. Okay, here we are again. Bell siphon is not quite triggering. We've got plenty of rain. But there is this point here where it just sits nice and flush with the top of that tube and water is going down. You can see it running down there, but it's just not triggering it. It needs to be sufficient flow for it to work. Oh, I heard something. Is it starting? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Boy, that is flowing. See a few LEDs? Oh! Just like they're supposed to. LEDs sat here all summer and they still work. Now here's the thing I want to see. I think the overflow might be dumping a bunch of water. Oh, it's not. Look at that. We are matching. We lucked out. The speed of the siphon is just matching the consumption from our jet down there. <laughs> I couldn't have planned that if I tried. So we're actually supplying water at the rate. Oh. That is beautiful. <clears throat> the, the siphon is pulling the water down out of the gutter and supplying it here at this nice, just ideal rate. It's just filling the tube, so we're not wasting any of it down the overflow. That is sweet. At this point, all indications are we've got this thing nailed. So I'm setting up cameras on time lapse to record the action. On probably the rainiest day this year, we caught the bell siphon cycling a good seven times, each time adding just a little more charge to my battery. I have to say this is working way better than the toilet valve ever did and is far more reliable. But just when you think you've got it all figured out, this happens. Ah, look at that. Ah, it's raining so hard, it's over my, uh over what the siphon can handle. I gotta open. Fortunately, I have an overflow on this end. Let it down. All right, note to self, gotta work out an overflow. That should fix it. Yeah. Okay. And we're charged.
But wait, I almost forgot. We've got a siphon experiment to get back to. Okay, it's time to try that experiment to see what happens. If we put the glasses at the same level on the same shelf, it looks like the water actually equalizes to exactly the same level. Now, what happens if we put one at a slightly different height? The water levels out again at exactly the same height, not to the level of the glass, but so that the top of the water is at the same height. And that's because atmospheric pressure is the same in both glasses. And we know from fluids that at any point in the system, if it's not moving, the pressure has to be the same at that same height. That's pretty cool. That's really, actually, that's really cool. But as soon as my son walked in and saw my experiment, he literally took it to the next level. He added a third glass with another piece of tube at a third height, which, as you might expect, leveled out the same as the first two. Going further, he added so water to the third glass, the which he predicted eventually. would eventually equalize with the other two. Nice work. As always, if you like my builds and want more of them on the internet, like, subscribe, look for me on Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video.